the name of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God, creator of all things, revealer of all truth, sender of all prophets. To Allah alone do I submit and seek refuge. We thank Allah for Moses and the Torah. We thank Allah for Jesus and the Gospel. We thank Allah for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. I, as a student of Scripture, thank Allah over and over and over again for raising up in our midst a divine leader, teacher, and guide who has made the scriptures of the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran a meaningful plan of liberation for us and for all humanity. I thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I hope and pray that before too many days or years pass over you, that you also will thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. In the Arabic language we say, Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I want to thank uh, the sisters for handling the program today. I thank you for the charity that all of you gave and thank you my daughter for helping to raise it. Thank the mistress of ceremonies, Sister Fabre, Sister Charlene, and I thank Sister Ava Muhammad for her introduction of me. And I thank Sister Felicia Evans. Of course, I thank Allah, God, for giving her such a magnificent instrument that she is using for his glory. We are happy this afternoon, of course, to have my beloved wife, and who is the mother of my nine children and grandmother of 22 and more on the way, Sister Farrakhan. And to all of the mothers who are present today, we are very, very honored by your presence. To all of the grandmothers and great-grandmothers, of course, white America commercializes on everything. So, we know that none of us could get here without a mother. And so, what a wonderful way to make a dollar. <laughs> Praise mother for a day. And we can buy all kinds of lovely gifts for mother and think that we have done what we should have done by mother by giving her a bouquet of flowers or some little cheap expression of a card by somebody and or some little gift maybe it's not a cheap expression maybe it's a fine expression but that's not the honor that mother should have 
That is too cheap. If it's only for 24 hours, that is too cheap. It is not a worthy expression for mother. In fact, every day that we live is a day to honor mother. Every day that we live. So since this is Mother's Day and you've been here for an hour and I, I, I want to get right to the meat of what I want to say and I'm going to try to say it quickly. But I'm excited. I've been excited all week thinking about today. And you know, I speak all the time, but today was very special, it seemed to me. All week long, I was wondering and thinking about today. I want to thank uh, my other daughter, Maria, and the florists for providing such a beautiful um, uh, array of flowers, which uh, most of them you'll have before the day is over. I don't know whether there's enough here for everybody, but they're beautiful. But not as beautiful as you. And flowers are magnificent the way they beautify creation. But nothing beautifies creation like a woman. And so I'm excited about Mother's Day. How many of you are mothers? Would you raise your hand, please? No brother, raise your hand. <laughs> all of these wonderful mothers. I want to talk to you, brothers and sisters, about the value of mother. And I want to say to all of our Muslim sisters that are present, all of our guests, if we all have to get up and give them our seats, we should be quick to do it. Because whatever we have, we build it for our people. And so if our people come in great numbers and we're put out of a seat, what a joyous thing to be put out of a seat. Now, what I want to say today about women I want us to think on it, reflect on it, take it home and mull it over in your minds. And tomorrow morning, when you get up, brothers, I'm hoping that you will have a different attitude toward your mother and toward women and sisters when you take this message home and get up tomorrow morning, I would hope that you would have a different attitude toward yourself. The attitude of women toward themselves is not a proper attitude. And certainly the attitude of men toward women is not a proper attitude. We are disrespectful of ourselves. We are disrespectful of our women. And we are disrespectful of our mothers. And many women are disrespectful of yourself because you really don't know who you are. You have a low opinion of yourself because you got your image of yourself not from God 
but from corrupt men. And there is no man who can give a woman the proper image of herself unless that man come directly from God because God is your creator. He knows why he created you and no one can give you your purpose better than God himself. Have you noticed, brothers, throughout the earth, women are upset against men. Women are on the move in every society on the earth against certain rules that they feel are restrictive and oppressive. Agree? And guess what? Women are revolting not just against oppressive conditions fostered by men, but men have fostered these conditions by their understanding or misunderstanding of religion. So there's no religion on the earth that women are really happy with in terms of their own self-expression. For a long time in the church, women were not permitted to speak. Come on. In fact, Paul says that the woman should be quiet in the church. Is that right? Come on, sisters. Is that what Paul said? And for many years, Paul held sway even over Jesus' attitude. Jesus never is seen rejecting woman. Have you noticed that? Jesus has been seen in scripture as a protector of, an elevator of, a teacher of women. The disciples were not like that. They were not as kind to women as Jesus was. But Paul was very specific that the woman shouldn't have anything to say in the church. So it's strange, sisters, that angels visited women. Angels came to Mary. Ain't no angel has visited us, brother, have they? <laughs> but angels visited Mary, but if Mary was in the church under that kind of teaching, Mary couldn't speak. She couldn't probably say what the angel told her because a man wouldn't want to hear it. In the Jewish tradition, women don't talk in the, in, in the synagogue. And in the Islamic tradition, women don't have too much to say. Not in the mosque. In fact, in the Islamic tradition, many mosques don't allow the women in. Isn't that something? And then they put that on God. We've got to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> We've got to understand, is this man's foolishness or did this come from God? And if it came from God, then we want to know why. Are women intelligent? Yeah. The Bible says a wise child maketh a glad father, but a foolish child is the heaviness of its mother. Think about that. A wise child makes a glad father. 
If you have a wise child in your father, isn't the father real happy? But father, you can't have a wise child unless you got a mother that's making the child wise. Is that right? Now, so if a foolish child is the heaviness of its mother, then a wise child is the honor of its mother. Huh? But in this world, women are put down. But she reflects all of the attributes of God. But yet, she can't move to bring out her attributes. She can't bring them out in the church. She can't bring them out in the society. Her base, or rather her place, has been the home. Get in the home. Stay there. Don't come out till a man lets you out. But here she's got all this talent all these gifts that God gave her, but she's not developing these gifts. Is God prodigal? Did God waste time giving women all of this talent, all these gifts, and then confining the woman to the house? Let's think about this. Then why? Is it not only did the prophets have women secure behind secure boundaries, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, our teacher, put woman first in that home. Is there something wrong with men? Are men threatened by intelligent women? If they are, something is wrong with the man. Because no real man is, a, is threatened by a strong woman. Any real man wants a strong woman. Doesn't he? All oh, praise is due to our Lord. Now, I'd like to frame this subject saying that woman is to man as earth is to humanity. Woman is to man as earth is to humanity. If the earth is valuable, then woman is valuable. If we can't live without the earth, then we cannot live without a woman. We call the earth mother. I want us to reflect on that. God created the earth for us. All of us come up out of it, and all of us must what? Return to it. The earth has to be protected in order for the earth to produce good crop. The earth must be protected. God in the Quran says that he created the universe and he set the balance. God creates nature and God has set a balance in nature. But since the Caucasian 
power the earth has been corrupted are you listening the African the Native American the ancient people knew how to live in harmony with the earth new man evidently does not know how to live in harmony with the earth so new man has corrupted the earth and once you corrupt the earth then everything produced from a corrupted earth is also corrupted so it is with the woman if the earth today is corrupted then woman is also corrupted because any man that does not respect the earth cannot respect women. And any man that will destroy the earth will destroy woman, will destroy himself. So the whole planet is suicidal because of its treatment of the earth and because of its treatment of women. God has given the earth protection. What is the protection for the earth? The very atmosphere of the earth, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us, is made of fire. So any falling body falling into the earth's atmosphere is burned up on contact with the atmosphere. A protected environment. God loved the earth, so he protects it. Once you remove the protection from that which should be protected, then you start the process of corruption. The Quran teaches corruption has appeared on the land and the sea on account of what? men's hands have wrought that Allah may make them taste a part of what they have done so that perhaps they may return the earth now is corrupted the sea is corrupted you come from the earth I come from the earth are we pure how could we be if we don't have a pure foundation? The earth is now corrupted, the water corrupted, and the water of the earth and the minerals of the earth make up your children. So your children do not have a chance to really live because they come from a corrupted planet, corrupted not by the hands of woman, it says by men's hand. Boy, boy, boy. Man, we got to talk. Allah created man, Bible, in his own image, after his own likeness. But he gives man a duty. He says multiply, re Replenish the earth and subdue it. God never gave man an instruction to corrupt the earth. He gave him an instruction to replenish it, to repeople it, to look after it, to take care of it, and to bring it under the power of your knowledge. Subdue it replenish it take care of it but what has man done he's poisoned it so right now you go home today after the mosque what kind of food are you eating talk to me you're eating a poisoned food that has been denatured 
Your whole body is dependent upon the chemistry of the earth to maintain itself. But if the vegetables that you eat are denatured, depowered, then they can't maintain this life. So if you're eating corrupted vegetables, corrupted fruit, eating from corrupted meat, you go into the sea and you fish, but man has corrupted the sea. He's put up factories that are poisoning the rivers, the streams, the lakes, and polluting the ocean. Isn't that something? So when you pull a fish up out of the ocean, it looks like the same fish we used to eat, but it's no longer the same quality. The fish is poison, so when you eat it, you poison yourself. Why are you dying of cancer today in a modern world when a hundred years ago, a hundred and fifty years ago, your great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers never knew what cancer was, never had it, never died from it. Man has more hospitals today in America, more hospitals because more disease. They have more diseases than they have hospitals, more diseases than we have a place to care for the diseased. Why? The earth is corrupt. The sea is corrupt. Boy, boy, boy. They're talking now about the ozone layer. I hope this is not boring to you. The ozone layer of the atmosphere keeps harmful rays of the sun from penetrating. Once you weaken the ozone layer, harmful rays of the sun get in and begin to produce its effect, which is further poisoning the earth and its atmosphere. Well, what has that got to do with mother? Well, once you take poison, chemicals, pesticides, and you put that into the earth, these pesticides as they poison the earth, when you pour water on that, the seeds germinate, the poisons come right in to the seed. This is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us you can't eat three meals a day with the amount of poison that are in the best food, your body becomes a walking mass of poison. You never get a chance to cleanse because you don't know how to fast. But you can purify the earth. You can purify the water. You can purify your blood. But you have to know how. Listen. This is a strange Mother's Day lecture, isn't it? Man talking about ozone on Mother's Day. Here are greedy men pulling up and destroying the rainforests, pulling up trees. Ah, oh, what? It's a tree. Pull it up. Cut it down. We got to make a profit here. But in pulling up trees, and destroying the rainforest, they are producing what they call the greenhouse effect, which is warming the earth and causing danger to those of us who live on the earth. The famine that is in Africa today is not God made. The famine that is in Africa today is man made, made by greedy men who know but don't do better. They pull up 
trees. Trees protect the topsoil. When you pull up a lot of trees, the waters come and wash away the topsoil. When the topsoil is washed away, then the earth is no longer productive. The earth worm is valuable in creating topsoil. Y'all all right? Now what has that got to do with mother? Mother? I didn't come here to get no lecture on the earth. But I'm not talking just about the earth. I'm talking about you. Because the waters are poisoned, we are in serious trouble. We can live much longer than we are living, but when you've got a corrupted mother, a corrupted earth, that lessens your chance of survival. Today, white folk have exploded nuclear devices under the ground. They've exploded nuclear devices on top of the ground, not realizing what the effect of that huge nuclear cloud would produce. They're building huge nuclear plants that have nuclear waste and they don't know what to do with their nuclear waste. So they bury it. Where? In the earth. Yes, they bury it so-called in drums of steel and whatnot. But anything you put into the earth is not going to stay that way because the earth is a living thing. It's moving and shifting, and it will break up steel over time. It'll bring that steel right back to itself in time. So the earth is being poisoned, and the poison of nuclear waste is getting into the water table. And people are drinking poison water, eating poison vegetables, eating poison meat, and wonder why our bodies are wrecked with disease. When you live in the black community, the poison is double because they give you the worst food produced in the worst way. So even though they say white people are living a little longer, what do you mean living longer? Well, white folks now die at 70 years of age. And black folk are losing their life span, getting shorter. Well, 70 is nothing. Brothers, 70 isn't even a baby. You didn't hear me, uh, grandmother. Grandma, you haven't even reached the age to be considered a baby. And you ready in your mind to check out. That's a shame. Showing you we never have been taught how to live. And that's why, dear Christians, when the scripture says Jesus came, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I hasten to tell you in the most respectful manner, maybe you have not met Jesus yet. Maybe you know his name and you know what he's gonna do, but maybe you haven't met him yet 
personally because you are dying too young. Seventy years of age and you're talking like you're an old man. Well, I'm getting old now. I'm getting old, children. I don't have many more years. You're right. You keep thinking like that, you won't have many more years. <laughs> but if you open your Bible and read the genesis of these ancient patriarchs who lived 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, nearly a thousand years. What is 70 years compared to a thousand? What is a hundred years old compared to six or seven hundred? You're losing your hearing, losing your sight, losing your faculties, losing power over your bodies at a, such a young age. It is not because you're old. It is because mother has been destroyed. mother the Native Americans could have taught the wise white people a lot about caring for mother earth the Native Americans have a lot to teach the world about caring for the earth the old ancient black people of the south the ancient black people of Africa, they know what to do with herbs. They're not witch doctors. They are herbalists of the highest form and expression. You think when you go to the drugstore and get a pill that that's modern medicine. No, fool. No, pardon me. I don't, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be disrespectful. But white folk are studying the herbs. Then they synthesize the chemistry of the herb and put it in a capsule and cause you to spend 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, $100 for a capsule. But if you knew the herb, and knew how to go to the earth. Your sickness is misuse of the earth. Your health and your longevity is the proper use of the earth. Why are you talking like this, Farrakhan, on Mother's Day? Because any man that would corrupt the earth would also be a corrupter of women. And when you got a corrupt woman, you can never produce the right kind of fruit from a corrupt tree. So I'm going to talk to the women, but I want to say something to us as men. God doesn't put the weight of that on the woman. He does not. Many men like to throw off, that's a no good woman. You hear it in the church, watch out for that woman now. She'll trap you, she'll trick you with her guile and her cunning. <laughs> but if we're the men that we're supposed to be, she can't help but be the woman that she's supposed to be. Why do I say that? The Quran says, and this is Allah talking, men are the maintainers of women. Allah never said that the woman is the maintainer of men, but Allah put that burden on the man. To maintain means to preserve, to protect, to keep safe. 
It was man's duty to keep the earth safe, to preserve it, to protect it. But the earth is corrupted because the man who was given the job to preserve it and protect it is a corrupted man. He's a rotten man. Are you listening? And the men that have been given charge over you, woman, are as rotten and no good as the men who were given charge over the earth. You have no preserver. You have no protector. You are a destroyed woman. And that's why your children come back at you when you think you've done good for them. They curse you to your face because you are a corrupt woman. Yes. Look, hollering in Jesus' name don't make you pure. Being in the church morning, noon, and night doesn't make you pure. Running up and down the aisles, getting the Holy Ghost don't make you pure. Purity is gained through knowledge of truth that is pure and we live up to that pure truth then in that truth we purify ourselves. Please listen. Allah says men are the maintainers of women. And as I studied that, I said, oh my goodness, we have failed as men. We failed our daughters. We failed our wives. We have dishonored our mothers as men. What happened to us as men? We fell under the influence of a corrupter. And our power to maintain her became broken by the corrupter. So you are not the man that you and I should be. She can't be the woman that she should be because it takes a man to make her that. God didn't make woman first. He made man first. So, brothers, you're not going to remake the woman until we remake the man. So God didn't say, let us make woman. He said, let us make man. Because man, he makes, according to the Bible now, in his image and likeness. And he gives the woman to the man. She's man's gift. And if you got a gift and you don't know what to do with it, anybody will come and take your gift from you. And that's just about what has happened. Praise be to Allah. Listen, listen, listen. Polluted earth brings forth polluted life. Polluted water brings forth polluted life. Anything that is polluted does not have a chance for longevity. You say, well, I had a grandfather, he ate snuff, chewed snuff, he ate pork, he drank whiskey. He was something. He lived 109. Imagine how long he would have lived if he didn't do that. <laughs> so don't boast in your cheap little years. 
Your little cheap lifespan is nothing. So don't boast in that. The oldest one in here today hasn't even reached being a baby. The Bible in the book of Isaiah says, in that day, a babe shall die at a hundred. Isn't that something? Why, dear brothers and sisters, we are dying and have not even learned the planet that we live on. It's almost a waste to come here and leave without doing something, leaving something of value to say that we were here. But before you can make your mark, you're gone. Why are you gone, man? Crack took you away. Alcohol took you away. Bad habits took you away. Where did you learn it from? You learned it from the society and you learned it from your home and you learned it from your mother who learned it from a corrupter. Who is this corrupter? Let me tell you something, sisters. When you know your value, then you don't mind somebody putting protection on what is value. You don't protect something you don't value. You got a diamond ring? Somebody give you a diamond? You gave it to yourself? Good. You're not going to go out on 47th Street and happen to just leave it. If it's worth something, when you get to 47th Street, you turn it around and make it look like it ain't nothing. <laughs> you got a gold chain around your neck, you better hide it when you get to 47th Street. Because anybody see your valuable will take it. If you got sense, you put protection on it. Look. You got money? Mm-hmm, I got a few dollars. I got a few too. Look at this thing. This is paper. Paper. How many people have gotten killed over this? How many homes have been broken up over this? How many families have fallen out because somebody died and left some of this? to somebody we didn't think they should have left it to. Paper. Paper that somebody put a value on. So when you get paper, you take it to a bank and you say, I'm depositing this in my account. Why did you take it to the bank? Why don't you keep it in your mattress? He said, I don't live in the right kind of neighborhood. These people will move my mattress out. <laughs> and so I'm taking my money to the bank, and I know that they got steel vaults in there, and they got guards with guns. I'm taking my money, which is paper, to a safe place. Well, what about your woman? She don't have any value to you. So you let your woman roam the streets at night, unprotected, disrespected. Have a good time, baby. Come back when you get ready. What kind of man is that? Now, when you go home tonight and try to act like a protector, <laughs> Don't come back to me tomorrow and say she went upside your head. <laughs> but she is too magnificent to be left without protection. Do we protect the earth? Look, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote in his book, Message to the Black Man. Listen to this. The woman 
is man's field to produce his nation. Stop right there. That's a very heavy sentence. Some sisters will say, look, man, I ain't no man spew nothing. <laughs> Don't compare me with no field, honey. Wait a minute, sister. We just talked about the value of the earth. You are the producer of the people. If the people are no good, Are you willing to take that responsibility that you ain't too good yourself? Talk to me, mother. You can't produce good unless you are good. You can tell a tree by the what? By the what? By the fruit it bears. What kind of fruit you bearing, woman? Then if you're not bearing good fruit, how can you be a good woman? And if you're not a good woman, where's your man? Where is the man? Now look, y'all all right? Give me a few more minutes, I'm not gonna be long. Don't get upset with me, cause this is think tank subject. I'm almost finished, just hang with me a little bit longer. Look, brothers, sisters, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, there's no such thing as a no good woman. My God. Now, I know what you're thinking. I didn't finish his sentence. <laughs> the brothers are thinking I know plenty of them. <laughs> but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, I'm going to quote him again, there's no such thing as a no good woman. Every no good woman was made no good by a no good man. Now isn't that something? And brothers, if you become a corrupter, there's no way that a good woman will remain good in the hands of a corrupt man. Particularly, sister, if you've fallen in love with the man, that your love becomes the instrument of your destruction when you love the wrong kind of man. Is that right? Follow me now. And you just seem to have a habit of falling in love with the wrong kind of man. Somebody say, but why I just love him, I just can't help myself, I just love him. The man beating you for breakfast, dinner, and supper, but you not leaving, I got to stay right in there because I love him. <laughs> he brought something in the other day. What was it, daughter? It was a little rock of something. I, he said, honey, how do you feel? I said, I don't feel too good. Ain't paid the rent in three months. But try some of this. Some of you sisters will become drug addicts because your husband is that. Then after he make you a drug addict, he'll make you a prostitute and bring men into your house to lay down with you because that lazy nigga don't want to get up and go to work. Men 
men are the maintainers of women. But a man can't maintain a woman unless that man's connection with God is maintained. I want you to listen to me well, brothers. To maintain means to preserve and to protect and to keep safe. You can't preserve or maintain and keep safe and protect a woman unless you are intact as a man. Now, I'm about to say something that may floor some of you. But just get up off the floor. <laughs> Listen. Do you know that black people have built civilization? greater than the one that you're living in now? And do you know that they are unearthing civilizations buried under the sands and the jungles that make this one look like kindergarten? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, that when we knew 9,400 years before an enemy was coming, we made preparations for him. Since he was going to rule, we covered up our wisdom so that he would have to rule on the wisdom he was given and not on our ancient wisdom. Listen now, you that are masons and shrines, eastern stars, come on now, we're going to talk to you. You that are wise, you know that the ancient study of masonry is the study of the wisdom of the originator, which western man was only allowed 33 degrees of the wisdom of the originator of a circle of 360 degrees of knowledge. Listen now. If a Johnny come lately is going to come to the planet and his rule is limited, the Bible says, That Adam, if he put his hand to the tree of life, he could become as God or as we and live forever. So they kept him from that tree. It means knowledge. If the white man got a hold to a certain knowledge, you could never remove his civilization. But God is so wise, he kept the great wisdom from this people so that when the time came for the end of their work, he would allow them to get a peep at wisdom that was far beyond their scope. Now look, I'm saying that to say this. When we knew that an enemy was coming, we buried our civilizations under sand and jungle so that the new man would not gain the wisdom of our ancient civilization, but we would give him enough knowledge to run his world for 6,000 years. And this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that he had a six ounce brain. It didn't mean that his brain weighed six ounces. It meant that the weight of his knowledge would carry him 6,000 years. But when the 6,000 years were up, his knowledge 
would be turned backward and he would become like a confused child because a greater knowledge would be introduced to break up the power of his knowledge. <laughs> now let's see. Let's see if the Quran and the Bible bear witness to this. Listen to Jesus. I thank thee, Father in heaven, for keeping these things from the wise and the prudent man and revealing them unto babes. Meaning that the wise and prudent men who rule the world would not know what they should know to keep their world in the presence of a superior knowledge. Isn't that something? Look again at the Quran. Y'all all right? Allah says in the Quran, I am going to place a ruler in the earth. And the angels said to Allah, what will you place in it but that which will create mischief and cause the shedding of blood? And Allah said, I know what you know not. Now look, God is going to allow somebody to rule. But the ruler is going to be one who creates mischief and causes the shedding of blood. Stop. Sisters, do you know what your nature is? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it like this. He said, Woman is created after the nature of God. She's the second self of man and really the second self of God. He, Allah, created you to bow to him. You're not man's woman. You're the woman of God. That's why men who don't have God in them can't keep you. <laughs> Listen, brothers. Listen, brother. I know you may be handsome. And that may get it for a minute. You may have big muscles and you may run down the football field and she will drool and say, ain't he fine? He's so fine. That's the first stage. Now after he is fine, you say, I'm going to make him Mine. <laughs> now, when you go to make him yours, depend on what he want. Well, what you see is what you get. But after he and you are married, there are many more handsome men than the man you marry and many more strong-looking, powerful-looking men. It's got to be more than his good looks that keeps you. Brother, you know what keeps a woman? It is the wisdom of God in you and you being dutiful to God you will be dutiful to her. And when you 
keep your duty to God and then are dutiful to the woman in terms of maintaining, preserving, and protecting her in the nature in which she's created, then she has in her deposited from God all the consolation that a man needs to make heaven on earth while you live. It's all in her. Yeah? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, a woman is man's heaven. You said, not mine. I heard you, brother. <laughs> but brother, don't blame her. The messenger said, it's one thing to know that iron ore is in the earth. It's another thing to mine it out and put it into the service of man. It's one thing to know that heaven is in the woman for us, but it's another thing entirely, brother, to be able to extract it. And you cannot extract it unless you become what God created you and me to be. I'm going to place a ruler in the earth when you meet a man that you love, first thing you do is submit to him. I'm not talking sex now. I'm talking submission. When you love a man, if he says, Honey, could you meet me at 8 o'clock? I mean, you, you lay that 8 in your brain. And I mean round five, you getting ready for eight. And at eight, here she come. You submit, honey. Uh, you ask him, are you, are you hungry? You hope he is. Are you hungry? And you want to fix something for him, even if you can't cook too well. You're going to try to do something to please him. That's your nature. Now look at this. If God says in the Quran, I'm going to place a ruler in the earth, but he's going to be a ruler to create mischief and cause the shedding of blood, then God must make provisions for the woman. Because the first act of a ruler, if he's a wicked ruler, is to break the rule of the man. And once he breaks the rule of the man, the woman becomes his field now to play around in. Are you listening to me? So God knows that when the earth is corrupted, it can't bring forth good fruit. When the woman is corrupted, she can't bring forth good children. So he said, put the woman in the house and lock your door. Did you hear me? Have you ever been a material witness in a court case? You know they will come to your house and take you like you were a criminal and lock you up. And they say, well, you are a material witness. Your testimony is germane to the success of the prosecution of this case. Therefore, we cannot allow you the freedom because they will kill you. So we got to put you under protective custody. Protective custody looks just like jail. But the purpose is different. The motive is different. It's to keep you safe so you can give your testimony. 
You didn't hear me, sisters. God knew that a wicked one was coming to the earth to rule. So you had to be put under protective custody in order for you to be able to produce the Messiah that one day would overturn the rule of an enemy of God. Now let's see if this is right. I appreciate the changing of the post, but I think we ought to just sit down. You know, please, because it really attracts a lot of attention and it takes away from the preaching of the word. Since we're sitting and everybody's sitting, he ain't standing and falling out, so we don't have to change posts anymore. I'll be finished shortly. Okay? The brothers are being trained. And they're being made into real good soldiers. And what a blessing. Now, sisters, I want to talk. This is for you. God wanted you protected. So he tells the man, take your woman into the house and keep her in her home. You now, as her husband, you are the caretaker, the preserver, the protector. You got to be on your watch for any corrupting influence coming into your home to your women so you don't let no strange man come to your woman. Strict orders from God. Protective custody for the woman. How long will it last? As long as the enemy is on the planet, your woman got to be under protective custody. Listen to me now. You got to understand this, sisters. That's why religion seems so oppressive. It isn't because God don't love you. But it's because he loves you so much that he wants to keep you as safe as he can keep you so that perhaps one of your wounds will produce the one that would bring about the end of this world, salvation, and the bringing in of a new reality. Isn't that beautiful? Now just let me finish this now. I mean, there's so much to this, but we can't say everything in a short period of time, but you are smart enough to take the germs of what we are saying and look more deeply into it. All throughout Scripture, women have had to be placed in a certain way. Why? The enemy is coming. Who is the enemy? Well, you may not like it, but it's the Caucasian man. His way of civilization. You may not like this. This may seem not religious to you. But the white man's way is alien to God. He has created a world of disorder, mischief, and blood shedding. He loves to get in to your woman. Am I lying? <laughs> Brothers, the white man will come into every nation and after he breaks the man of that nation, he goes after that woman. And when he gets the woman in his clutches, he feeds her, he teaches her, he corrupts her, then he mixes his blood in her so that the children that she produces will really be his children. They won't be God's children, they will be bastards. 
meaning that they are the offspring of a ruler who came to the earth to create disorder. And you can't bring about disorder until you corrupt the woman after you break the power of a man to be her maintainer, preserver, and protector. Do you hear me, brothers? All right. And what I really want to ask, sisters, do you hear me? Because see, sisters, this man can't command you. This poor black man, we have been made so pitiful, brothers. The black woman wants to be with us, but at a great price. You can't control her because you don't have enough knowledge. She's smarter most of the time than the men. So you get into a lot of arguments and the only way you can get some order in the house is to beat her up. And you do that quite often. Men don't beat women. If you got to beat a woman, you don't need a woman. <laughs> the enemy has broken us as men. So our woman has been a field for him. And that's why I'm this color. If I were truly African, I wouldn't look like this. But what happened to the slave? Man, he was broken as a man. Once you make a man a slave, hey, he's through. He can't protect her. He don't have any power to protect. He's a slave, so she becomes the prize. He goes into you. He produces offspring. He doesn't want to nurture those offspring, and he really doesn't want you to be a good, strong mother. So he corrupts you, and he uses you. You don't teach your children the way of God because you really don't know God's way. You teach these children the foolishness that you learn from this foolish world. So I see you, yeah, yeah, listen. I see you, mother. You don't really know what to do with your babies. You have them. But you don't know how to rear them. You were never taught how to rear your children. Don't get angry with me, please don't. Don't get angry with me. It's Mother's Day, I'm not trying to make you angry. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. If you knew what to do with your children, you would have made a better child. Some of us are better than others of us at mothering. Sometimes it's a natural instinct. Maybe God has given it to you as a blessing. Some of you got strong parents and they passed on good things to you. So you did better than others. But none of us have come up to where God wants us. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. Dear sisters, this is not a put down. Please don't take it like that. But look, sisters, you're teaching your children now foolishness. You sit in front of the TV all day. If you got cable, you're looking at the latest dances. Or you're looking at the foolish soap operas. And you're not sitting down with your children putting wisdom in their heads. You got them learning the latest dance. Come on, baby. Come on, honey. The latest dances. Or you're looking at the foolish soap operas. And you're not sitting down with your children putting wisdom in their heads. You got them learning the latest dance. Come on, baby. Come on, honey. Shake it for me. Show me how you...
if they see you shaking all the time, what are they going to do? Shake like mama shake. If they see you baking all the time, they bake like mama baked. If you don't know how to make a home, you can't teach children to make what you don't know how to make. Now listen, I, I, I know we, we, we pass our time. But beloved sisters, the enemy has destroyed us as men so we can't be to you what we should be. And he's corrupted our women so you can't bring forth children like you should. And so we are all dead mentally, morally, spiritually in need of being resurrected to divine spiritual life to the pastors who are present to the imams who are present to the great leaders of religion who may be present or advocates of religion if you look at what you're doing you're not really producing good fruit you're maintaining the status quo of a world of disorder if a Muslim man doesn't want his wife to come to the masjid she don't pray with you you pray for her isn't that something you are not fit to teach her you really don't know how to teach her but you want to be her teacher but haven't been taught yourself so here you got a dissatisfied woman she builds the church that she can't talk in. There's not a church that has been built that wasn't built by a woman. If the women can build the church, how come they can't preach in the church? Without the woman, the pastor is finished because there's no men there to help the pastor build the church. The men are in the street. The women are in the church. Now let's look at this, brother. The white man gives her the job. He got to give it to a minority. So he'd rather give it to a minority woman, not to a black man. So he gets you, sister. You working downtown, your husband walking uptown without a job. You dress up in fine suits and go downtown working for white folks while the man that gives you babies has no job. And even if he has a college degree, They'll give him a job that they say he's overqualified for. Or they'll say, well, you're too qualified for this job, so I really won't give it to you. Or really, you don't have enough experience or qualification. So the poor man comes home to you. You are already working. You say, well, darling, don't worry. I'll do the best I can for us both. But what, what does that do for his self-respect? There's no man living that's a real man that want his woman working for him. There's no real man alive that can sit and look at his children without decent clothes to wear because he doesn't have a job. The more he looks at you in your condition and naturally sex is a part of our life. Sex is a part of nature. So when we have sex, we produce children, but every child is another burden on a head that can't work in the white man's world. So when he looks at his babies, he says, I can't handle it. So he walks out the door. And that's why 70% of black homes are headed by a woman and there's no man present because the church and the mosque and the schools and the synagogue has failed to produce a black man 
a black man who is connected to God ain't dependent on no damn white man to make no job for us. have come to God God will give us the strength to rely on him and if the birds can eat and there are worms for the birds and there's worms for the fish and there's vegetation for everything to eat you mean to tell me we the greatest of God's creation gotta walk around and look for a cheese handout at a church door when we got head and heart and hands and feet that can work no a woman can't respect a man that has no ability to provide for her it's not in her nature to continue to love you with no money You say, but baby, you took the vow. You said for better, for worse. It's worse, but it ain't getting no better. That's the problem. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's not our fault, brothers. But we're going to have to stop this. We're going to have to break into the cycle and break it up. And somebody got to break into the cycle of corruption of our women and make a better woman. Because when you make a better woman by making a better man, you make better children who will bring in a better world. And that's what we want. We want a better world for our children. Not going to be no better world until there's a better you. And there won't be a better you until God makes a better man for you. But even if the man ain't right yet, God always was and is right. And since you are the woman of God, then you got to tie back up to God as a direct source for your life, sisters, and clean and purify yourself from the corruption of the white man's world so that you can become a mother like mothers have never been before. Let me conclude. Where do you begin to end the corruption of the earth? It begins with knowledge. The scripture says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You have been a free for all kind of woman. But when you were in the south, on the farm, you did better. You produced your food, you remember? You churned your butter. You remember? You watched the chickens as they laid their eggs and you took fresh eggs and fed yourself and your family. You didn't have a lot of money, but you had health. Better than you have today. But now we're so dependent on white folk for everything. And they are corrupting everything that we eat. This is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we got to have land of our own in order to build a new reality. Now, I'm going to conclude because I want the sisters to understand the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was not any ordinary teacher. If he were an ordinary teacher, he would produce ordinary students. But he was an extraordinary teacher. And how do you know he's an extraordinary teacher? Just by what he taught 
and his example. Let me give you a case in point. He was taught by a master. There is no question about that. The one who taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught him how to eat to live. Started him first purifying the food. Isn't that something? When my wife and I became Muslims, one of the first things we heard was no aluminum pots. I didn't know about cooking in an aluminum pot. It was a pot. You got to cook in something. We cooked in the pot. Elijah Muhammad said, no, get rid of the aluminum pot. You cook in stainless steel. And we didn't ask why. We just obeyed. Come to find out now that traces of aluminum get in your food. They begin to poison your system and you have brain damage after you eat a lot from these aluminum pots. It's not that you're old. You're not old, but you just didn't know how to eat to live. The man started teaching us. Look at this now. He took the woman. He said, sisters, you have to know how to make a home. Come into the house. Well, naturally, intelligent, highly developed woman find that insulting. Me? Huh? Listen, not me. I'm just too intelligent for that. But he started a movement. He didn't base it on you sisters with a master degree or PhD degree and a very unhappy woman you are. With all your degrees, you ain't got a man. Ain't that something? And them degrees can't keep you warm at night. You understand? None of your professional degrees can make you happy in your home. You can't take that degree home with you and wrap it around yourself and say, I am happy, child, with my BS degree. No. Nobody is ever happy with BS, I mean degree. If you don't know how to make a home, you don't know how to be a happy woman. You'll never be a happy woman until you know how to make a home. That's where it all begins in the home. Everything starts in the home and the woman is the cornerstone of family. She's the cornerstone of home. We don't, in righteous circles, we don't shack up. We just don't do that. Oh, that's my man over there. <laughs> oh, you married to him? Oh, no, no, no. We just have an understanding. <laughs> we just shacking up. No, no, no. No, no, no. You have a shacking up understanding. See, you got to make a man commit himself I mean marriage is well what marriage is today is really a shack up because people ain't serious that's why I don't like to say weddings I say funerals because they're serious <laughs> I know when they're dead they're dead they ain't lying about being dead that's why I say funerals I know he's dead, and when we put him away, I know he's put away. But when you come before an altar talking about I will, and you mean you won't, I do, and you mean you don't. See, I don't like to be in involved in that kind of madness. I don't like to be involved in lies and shack up relationships where you get in it for five minutes and you run into a little snag and then you get the hell out of it and leave a woman now pregnant with a baby. You don't have no understanding of what life is. I don't like to be involved in that. And I hate irresponsible men 
that their word don't mean nothing in the presence of God or to their mates or to themselves. I hate that. Because all we got when we enter into marriage is our word. And if our word means nothing, then we are nothing. Marriage is the cornerstone of a family. And that's why last week I said that's why God kills people when they commit adultery. Because adultery breaks up the cornerstone of family and family is the cornerstone of nation and anything that breaks up a family is destroying a nation and that's why the killing individual is preserving the nation and that's why God kills individuals when they break his law I know this is rough don't get quiet on me you're thinking huh The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to the sisters, come in sisters. He said, go in your homes and I want you to make your homes the most wonderful place for you to live. Come in the home, sister. Why? There's a corrupter out there. And we don't want you any more corrupted than you are. We want to purify the woman so that if we purify the woman and the man, we get a product that will purify the world. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, Sisters, you have to learn how to cook. Some of you don't know how to cook right. Come on. Ain't got no time for that, right? You ain't no time to cook. And that's why McDonald's is killing you. <laughs> Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's, churches. I hope they don't sue me. But that's what you're feeding yourself. That's what you're feeding your children. You're killing yourself and your children with this greasy, no good food because you don't have any time. It takes time to make a home. But you see, the economics of today's world means both husband and wife have to work. Husband and wife have to work, but you're having children. Who's rearing the children? I don't know. Well, I, I put them over here at this daycare center And they're playing wild sex games at the daycare center. I put them over here. Somebody that don't care for your children is rearing your children. Because you got to work because there's not enough money. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was here, we men worked. And our wives reared our children and we would provide whatever was needed to make that family work as a man. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was not enslaving us. He was putting the woman under protective custody. And he took you sisters and he told you, lower the hem of your garment. Because he didn't want none of these men looking at your legs, thinking that you were legs instead of an intelligent creation of God. And he said, you know, ease up on the dress. Don't make it so tight. What are you trying to fashion? Ease up. Why ease up? Well, why? You so fine, you want to show your finery. 
And that's why men are like dogs today. Because you making, helping to make a dog out of a man by showing him what will make him lust for you rather than really love you. Why don't we just loosen up a bit? You can be beautiful. You don't have to cut the neck of your dress down so low. <laughs> Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a civilizer. And you don't civilize by the standard with men. Women are the standard by which you judge the degree of civilization of a people. And you know what? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us to fight for you. No question about it. Anybody try to mess over you, that was death. And we would carry it out. We didn't care who it was. White, black, don't make no difference. You don't play with our women. And that's the way it is in the Muslim world. Our world, you don't let men come in your home looking after your woman. Somebody knock on your door, they come in, and you the man of the house is supposed to be coming to see you. Well, where's your wife? What you want to know where my wife is for? You come to see me or my wife? In the Islamic world, it's a great honor to you if a man even presents his wife to you. Because in that world, they don't present their wives to you at all. They're serious about God knowing that a wicked one was coming. They're going to put some protection on their women. Not only do they dress her up so that you can't see her wares and cover her. Some of them went totally out of the box and went to putting veils on them and just veiled them up. And when they walk the street, you don't know what's going there. You can't say, you can't whistle, because you don't know what you're whistling at. You never saw it. She just walked by, you see something moving. Yeah, that's my wife. And if you say the wrong thing, Jack, you won't need a dentist. You'll see the undertaker. And that's why when the soldiers went over into the Islamic world, one of the first things they teach the American soldiers is leave the Muslim woman alone because these people will kill you over their woman. That's the way we got to be again. We got to be killers if it's necessary to protect our women. Say, oh, that's not righteous. Oh, yes, it is. I stand before any judge in America. Say, you killed that man. Yes, I killed him. It's against the law. Maybe so. But it's against the law for this man to try to corrupt my wife and my house. And I kill the weeds that are trying to corrupt my crop. I kill the insects. And I put a scarecrow on my land and I get me a shotgun. And if I see anybody trying to steal my crop, I blow him away. Ain't that right, Your Honor? Boy, we have a field day in the courts. All we got to do is stand up. We'll make a new law. We must protect our women. So, sisters, as I looked at this subject, I said religion is repressive, not because God wanted it to be that, because God knew that an enemy was coming and that enemy was going to corrupt the woman. And he put you in the vanguard position as a protector of your family and we have failed in that duty and the white man has conquered us 
as men so our women are no longer ours. They want to be, but they're not ours. I thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And as I leave you, I say to you that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us these parables from the New Testament and I'll close with this parable. The parable of the wicked husbandman. The earth was let out to be controlled by some wicked husbandmen. The earth, women, would be under the control of wicked men. And God sent persons in to check the fruit. And some the wicked husbandmen beat, some they killed, some they imprisoned. But the heir to the vineyard, when he came, the wicked husbandmen utterly slew the heir. So Jesus asked the Jews, and what will the master and lord of the vineyard do when he comes? And the Jews answered saying, he will utterly slay the wicked husbandman. And Jesus said, you have spoken correctly. The scripture says that the vineyard represents the earth. And you can see that the wicked have corrupted the earth and every now and then God would send a prophet into the world to check the product of the wicked rulers and the product was as corrupt as the rulers so God's prophets always had to reform people and because the enemy did not like a reformer among the people some they beat some they imprisoned, some they killed. And that's the history of the prophets. And so today, we have been in the hands of a wicked people. And they have broken us as men. And they have corrupted our women. And from them, we came. And we are corrupt men who do not know how to be real men. Our poor mothers are in pain because of us. They love us, but they don't necessarily know what to do for us. And that's why we thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because more so than anybody, that man understood what to do for us. I remember one day when he got this building, we were driving in the car together, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he was going to build a fence around this property, like a wall that you couldn't see in it. And he said, now I can let my children out of prison. Some of you sisters, my daughters were among them. My daughter Donna, my daughter Betsy Jean, my daughter Maria. They were the foundation of the University of Islam in New York City. They were sacrificed in a sense. Elijah Muhammad told me, take your children out of the public schools. And I did. And they grew under Islamic training. It wasn't the high-powered education of some of the finer schools, but it was a God-centered education. 
Some of you that grew up in the university, you didn't even know the value of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was giving you until you didn't have it anymore. Listen to me. Some of you, my daughters, wanted to go to college. They had completed high school. And Elijah Muhammad said, don't send them. What do you mean, the apostle? Don't send my girls. They want to grow in knowledge. He said, don't send them. Wait until I build a university where we will have a dormitory for 10,000 students. Tell them, wait. Why wait, sister? Because he knew that you wanted knowledge and you needed knowledge and he wanted you to have it. But he had made you virtuous girls. You went off into life a virgin. There's no such thing as a virgin in this world, man. You don't know the value of what a virtuous woman is. It is better for you to have no degree and have your virtue than to be a degree whore. I know it's hard. You can never get your virtue back once it's gone. You can always grow in knowledge, but knowledge is supported by character. And the white man's world don't build character. It gives you knowledge, but you're low-life people. Knowledgeable, low-life men and women. White man ain't thinking about building any better world. But Elijah Muhammad was. And he wanted his women and girls protected because when you don't have no decent women, you'll never produce a decent man. That man, that man, Elijah Muhammad, when you say his name, you ought to say all praise is due to God that at last God gave us a man. Not the white man gave us a man, but God gave us a man, a man for all seasons. Excuse me for raising my voice and getting excited. But I, I get angry when I think of you, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters. We love Prophet Muhammad. We can't be Muslims if we don't love the man through whom the Quran was revealed. But Prophet Muhammad been dead for 1400 years and he don't have good representation in the Islamic world. Nobody came after us. Nobody cared for us. But Master Farad Muhammad came and raised one from us for us. Can nobody teach black people in America like Elijah Muhammad? And can nobody in black America teach black people like his student, Louis Farrakhan? I am the teacher today.
I'm not trying to blow no horn on myself. But I'm a teacher from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to civilize black men and women so that you will be accepted and respected throughout the world. Elijah Muhammad said to one sister whose parents said, I'm sending mine to college. Elijah Muhammad wrote the mother and father, said, send them. But if anything happens to your daughter while she's in these dens of iniquity, then I will double the punishment to you. Because he made us protectors of our family. And we turn our family over into these dens of filth. What do you think these dens of filth are going to make of our women and girls? They go there one way and they come back another. Because the white man's world is not going to produce a good product. And that's why without Mary, you never would have had Jesus. And you could not have had a Mary unless there was a Zacharias. Zacharias was the man in whom Mary was placed in his charge. And brothers, until we become decent men, where our girls in our charge will not be molested by us, you will never make a decent product. A good woman has to grow under good men. And that's why Elijah Muhammad set up a woman's class and wouldn't let a man go near it. Threatened us with punishment if we tried to dabble in the woman's class. Why? Because any man is not worthy. So mothers, when you leave here today, look at yourself. Look in the mirror at yourself. You are God's representative to your children. You're not man's representative. You're God's representative to your children. We come out of the darkness of your womb even as he brought all creation out of the darkness of space. He makes your womb after his own laboratory of creation. He makes you loving and compassionate as a mother. Although there are women today doing things that you never would have thought you'd ever see, having babies and throwing them in incinerators, having babies and flushing them, throwing them out windows, burning them up in ovens, we have truly become animals. I plead with you, sisters, when you leave this place, you are potentially the best friend and teacher to all human beings. And that's why when a true mother is lost, that is a pain you never get over. My mother passed away approximately 18 months ago. I didn't know how powerful my mother was. You know, it's something like you take for granted because she's there all the time, you know. And when my mother was no longer present, it was like somebody took a warm blanket away from me and for the first time I could feel the chilly wind because 
my mother was really a divine protector for me as you mothers are divine protectors for your children fathers don't wake up instinctively in the middle of the night God put that in you so when your little ones are suffocating somehow you will know it and you wake up in the night to save your baby in time it's you mother you're the greatest friend that God has given to living things living beings as great as a father is there is nothing and no one like a mother. Prophet Muhammad was moved to say, heaven is at the foot of mother. And Prophet Muhammad was moved to say that he who treats his mother best is best among you. So you that raise your voice to your mother from this day forward, never again. If your mother is alive today, go find your mother. And if you are angry with her, for whatever reason, you may think you're justified. There is no reason that the Quran gives that justifies us being disrespectful of our mothers. So you go find your mother and embrace her and thank her for doing the best that she could even if it wasn't too good. She brought you here, and without her, you could never have been. Will you do that? You will? And you that are young mothers, fill your head with knowledge. Your mother did the best she could. Now you can't boast or say that you did not have sufficient knowledge because now God is flooding us with greater knowledge so if you want it you can get it and use it to build strong life my mother was not a high school graduate my mother was not a college graduate. My mother was a very wise black woman, wise with common sense. And most of you are mothers. You didn't get a college education. You didn't hardly get a high school education. You came in the South and you worked hard day in and day out. You didn't have a chance to get it. But you tried to make sure your children got it. But your children with education have not accomplished with you what you have accomplished without it. Haven't you wor worried about that? They got all these degrees and are less productive. Not all, but most. And sisters, you young mothers, imbue yourself with knowledge. Stop being silly women and start being serious women because life is serious, not silly. It's not frivolous. When you've got children, you've got responsibility. And the more you grow here, then when you teach your babies, you take the wisdom from here and you put it in their little ears. And in a few days, you'll see your children acting like children of wisdom.
and the way you start today clean up your bodies don't put any filth knowingly in this house of God huh? don't snort any coke brothers because the coke you snort today that messes up your brain it affects the sperm that is the future of our people so you coked up you coked up your sperm you coked sister and you got a baby growing in you you smoking cigarettes and you got a baby growing in you you drinking whiskey and you got a baby growing in you no up to today okay after today no good well how do I stop how do I stop I want to stop stop is it that easy no you just got to make up your mind you don't need pills <laughs> you don't need uh, what is that uh, No, it's a, it's a mind game that they play. What do they call it? Hypnosis. You don't need that. You know what you need? You need to develop your will. Not a pill, your will. And when you say, I won't, mean it. And throw them cigarettes away. Throw the alcohol and the drugs away. After today, do not defile your house. On Friday nights, we have study uh, groups here, and we are dealing with the study of how to develop the power of our own beings to be able to command what we want out of life and not be beggars. Every Muslim, every visitor, you should be at that Friday class don't miss it thank you for your attendance thank you for your attention no longer corrupt the earth because when you corrupt the earth you corrupt yourself thank you for listening and may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>